So last week we said we would uh, talk some more about the kingdom of God. So I want to um, begin by picking up a theme that runs through the Bible. So I'm going to turn to Numbers chapter 14. So this uh, section comes when Israel was journeying in the wilderness after they left Egypt. And they failed to show faith in the things that God had said. God was not happy with Israel because of their bad attitude. So Moses asked God to forgive the people. And God says that he will forgive them. And then we can read verse 21, Numbers 14, verse 21. اما به حیات خودم و این حقیقت که تمام زمین از جلال خداون پر خواهد شد سوگه. So, so God talks about the earth being filled with his glory. Uh, and what God is saying is that it doesn't matter that these people have sinned. But God's purpose remains unchanged. Um, the bad behavior of, of men and women will not stop God doing what he wants to do. Uh, and what he describes himself doing is, is filling the earth with his glory. Um, and this is an idea that comes many times in the Bible. So if we go to uh, Isaiah in chapter 11. So th this is a, a chapter that is about God's kingdom. And uh, we'll come back and look at the detail a bit later on. But for now we can read verse 9. So again, there's a similar language to the language that we read in the book of Numbers. 
و این هم دقیقا جمله شبیه در آی اعداد آیه اعداد خوندیم شبیه اون هستش اینجا In Numbers it talked about the earth being full of God's glory. کتاب اعداد در مورد جلال خداوند صحبت کرد. And in this place it talks about the earth being full of a knowledge about God. و در این آیه نه در مورد شناخت خداوند از جهان صحبت می‌کنه. Now those two ideas come together in the book of Habakkuk. That's Habakkuk chapter 2. verse 14 okay so it's saying we get the same type of language as we have in the other places و این هم همین جمله شبیه که در کتاب اعداد و اشیا خوندیم هستش Again, God talks about the earth being full of something. و خدا داره در مورد یک چیز خاصی که جهان رو در راه گرفته صحبت می‌کنه But this time he talks about the earth being full with a knowledge about his glory. و در این آیه داره صحبت می‌کنه در مورد شناخت خداوند در مورد شناخت بیشتر خدا در باره جلال او And in the same way as everywhere there is sea there is water همه جا داریم می‌بینیم که در مورد دریا و آب‌ها صحبت می‌کنه Then God is saying that in every part of the earth that people will know about his glory قسمت‌هایی از جهان هستش که خداوند مردم در مورد جلال خدا کامل نمی‌دونن So we need to ask the question what is the Bible talking about when it talks about God's glory? Uh, sometimes different prophets might see dreams or visions. And those dreams and visions might uh, contain beautiful or bright pictures. Which the Bible uses to teach something about God and His glory. But the main idea has to do with God's character and God's behavior. So if we turn to the book of Exodus, میریم به کتاب خروج. And chapter thirty-three. صفحه Uh, this is a, a chapter about Moses. In Bob uh, When Moses was leading the nation of Israel in the wilderness. Uh, and again, he needed encouragement because of the bad behavior of those people. And in Exodus chapter 33 and verse 18, he asked God a question. He asked God to please show me your glory. 
و از خدا میپرسه که جلال خودتو به من نشون بده So we've got a, a, a verse that is directly about the glory of God. And in verse 19, we can read God's answer. از برابر تو می بذارانم و در برابر تو نام خود یهو را ندا می کنم فیض خواهم بخشید به هر که نسبت به او فیاز هستم و رحم خواهم کرد به هر که نسبت به او رحیم هستم So God says to Moses that he will show Moses all of his goodness خدا به موسا گفتش که تمام چیزای خوب را به تو نشون می دهم And then he talks about the way in which he works with some men and women. He says that he will be gracious towards the people who he chooses to be gracious to. Yeah. And he will be merciful to the people that he chooses to be merciful to. بخشنده خواهد بود فیض خواهد بخشی در مورد کسایی که به خداوند فیض دارند فیاض هستن so Moses is asking about God's glory و موسی در مورد سوال پرسه در مورد جلال خدا and God is talking about the way that he behaves و خداوند در مورد رفتار او خدا جواب میده in particular the way that he chooses to show kindness to some people و این داره نشون میده چیزی انتخاب کرده که نسبت به مردم مهربونه. Um, so God is connecting his glory with his behavior. و خداوند داره اینا رو به هم ربط میکنه با فیاض بودن و رحمتش. But, but he also told Moses that he would allow Moses to see all his goodness. So he also told Moses that he would allow Moses to see his goodness. و به موسا گفتش که در مورد چیزهای اجازه میدم به تو در مورد چیزهای خوبی که به تو خواهم بخشید In the next chapter, chapter 34 در باب بعدی 34 Then Moses has a special experience while he is on the mountain of Sinai و موسا یک تجربه بسیار خوبی در کوه داره God sends an angel to Moses uh, to talk to Moses about God. Uh, and to give Moses a greater understanding of the God who he worshipped. موسا را متوجه کرد که در چیزی که خدا میخواد چی میتونه باشه و آگاه کرد از خواسته خدا. So we can read that in Exodus 34 verses 5, 6 and 7. باب 34 آیه 5, 6 و 7. آنگاه خداوند در اب فرود آمد و آنجا با موسا ایستاد و نام یهوه را ندا کرد خداوند از, موسا برا... از برابر موسا گذشت و چنین ندا کرد یهوه و یهوه و خدای رحیم و فیاض دیر خشم و آکنده از محبت و وفا هایدار در محبت برای هزار پشت و امر زنده تقصیر نافرمانی و گناه اما تقصیر کار را هرگز بی صدا نمی گذارد بلکه جزای تقصیرات پدران را به فرزندان و فرزندان فرزندان تا پشت سوم و شهار می رساند و این در مورد خدا در مورد این داره صحبت می کنه که به موسا داره میگه و چه, چیز، چه چیزهای خوبی را می تونه ببینه And so Moses receives um, you know, a declaration of 
you know, God's character of, of how God behaves. و موسا دریافت کرد از رب... چه چیزایی در مورد خدا در مورد رفتار خدا و خوبیایی که خدا داره So when the Bible talks about God's glory that the main thing that it's talking about is God's character وقتی که کتاب داره در مورد جلال خدا صحبت میکنه یعنی داره میگه در مورد شخصیت و رفتاری که خدا بند داره در موردش اطلاعات توضیح میده It says that the, the angel declared the name of the Lord. The angel declared. Yeah, declared or proclaimed. Mm-hmm. And we read that the special name of God that the Old Testament uses um, in verse 6. Old Testament. Which book? The whole of the Old Testament. Oh, the But really, yeah, the Bible is not focusing or placing an emphasis on the the word or the name that God uses. Uh, در مورد اسم یا چیز خاصی که خداوند داره در موردش مستقیما صحبت نمی‌کنه. But when it's talking about the name it, it's really talking about the reputation. Uh, وقتی که در مورد داره اسم صحبت می‌کنه دقیقاً در داره در مورد uh, reputation means that you uh, yeah. how 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 people perceive or how people understand something. در مورد uh, <laughs> yeah, in the way that, that, that some people are famous for certain things. So if you say the name of that person, it makes you think about the, the thing that they are famous for. So God's name is really what God will be famous for. Uh, he'll be famous for the way in which he deals with men and women. And being willing to show mercy and grace to those who approach him in the way that he desires. But also showing justice in respect of sin and bad behavior. So when um, yeah, the Bible talks about God's saying that he intends to fill the earth with the knowledge of his glory, و همچنین وقتی که کتاب داره در مورد زمین و پر از جلال خداوند میکنه صحبت میکنه He's saying that in every part of the earth there will be an understanding of God's character and God's purpose که به هر قسمت از زمین باید قابل مورد توجه و قابل درک باشه براشون در مورد شخصیت و جلال خداوند that the God intends there to be a knowledge of the true God in every place. Uh, at the present time, you know, really there are only a, a small number of people in, in a small number of different places that really have a good understanding 
of what the Bible says and about what God is like. قسمت های کوچکی از زمین اشخاص بسیار کمی در قسمت های مختلف از زمین در مورد شخصیت و علم, علم کافی نسبت به خداوند رو میدونن and God wants that knowledge to be in every single part و خداوند میخواد همه این علم اون شناختی که نسبت به خدا داریم تو قسمت های مختلف از زمین برقرار بشه every part of the world wherever there are people and the purpose of his kingdom is to make that happen uh, but it goes beyond just knowing about God در مورد بیشتر دونستن و پیشرفت کردن در مورد دانش خداونده میریم به پیدایش باب اول صفحه دوازده باب جنسیس دیسکرایبز گاپس creation of the earth. And in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 and 27 he talks about the creation of men and women. در پیدایش باب 1 آیه 26 و 27 خداوند در مورد خلق کردن آدم و زن و مرد صحبت می‌کنه. We read those verses. آنگاه خدا گفت انسان را به صورت خود و شبیه خودمان بسازیم و او بر ماهیان ماهیان دریا و بر پرندگان آسمان و بر چاپایان و بر همه زمین و همه خزندگانی که بر زمین می‌خزند فرمان برند. پس خدا انسان را به صورت خود آفرید او را به صورت خدا آفرید ایشان را مرد و زن آفرید. So when God created men and women, then they were different to the rest of the animal creation. Because they were made in the image and likeness of God. Now, in verse 26 that we read, <coughs> then there are a group of people talking uh, that say, let us make man in our image. Uh, Uh, and the people who are speaking in verse 26 are the angels of God. So that when God commanded the creation of the earth, it was God's angels who performed the work. فرشتگان خداوند بودند که دستور را اجرا کردند. And it is God's angels who are described as talking about the creation of mankind in verse 26. که در آیه 26 فرشتگان خدا دارند در مورد چگونگی خلق مرد و زن روی زمین رو بگن. So yeah, mankind was made like the angels of God. Um, که مرد شبیه فرشتگان خداوند شبیه آن مورا فریده شد so when angels appear at different times in the stories of the bible فرشتگان در داستان های مختلفی در کتاب مقدس ظاهر شدن that they usually look like men که بیشتر شبیه مرد بودن در کتاب in fact there are occasions when the person who is talking to an angel does not know that they are talking to an angel. 
که در صورتی بوده که وقتی کسی که داشته در با فرشتگان صحبت کرده نمیتونسته تشخیص بده که اون طرف فرشت است They just mistake the angel for another man و اون اشتغال میکرده اونم مثل این که فرشته یک مرده So, so part of uh, what Genesis is saying is that, that man has the same form as the angels of God. But the, the, the meaning of the Hebrew language says more than that. It's saying that man is also like the angels because mankind has an ability to understand in a way that the animals cannot. بیشتر به خاطر این شبیه مرده چون کسانی که شبیه مرد خلق شدن بیشتر از حیوانات و چهار پایان درک میکنن. That, that men and women can understand about right and wrong. Uh, they can you know, think about concepts like beauty and art in a way that animals cannot. Uh, and they can understand the ways of God in a way that animals cannot. So, so men and women you know, have, a, have a, a, a capacity of mind that is being described that makes them distinctive in the in the outcome of their creation. زن و مرد پس میتونن یک ذهنیت بازی دارن برای تشخیص طبق این آیه که صحبت کرده که بیشتر به صورت خدا هستن میتونن چیز درست و بیشتر تشخیص بدن نسبت به بقیه خلق شده ها. Is that distinctiveness that you know, makes them you know, suitable for, for taking the lead in, in God's purpose with the earth. So that this idea of man being made like God and particularly like the angels of God is also really a prophecy. وقتی که اینجا داریم که مرد شبیه فرشتگان خداوند خلق شده یا خداوند خلق شده یک پیشگویی داره میکنه because god's intention with creation was that men and women should be like god they should behave like god که داره این پیش بینی میکنه مرد و زن که وقتی میگه شبیه خداوندن یعنی میتونه شخصیتشون رفتارشون شبیه خداوند باشه so the Filling the earth with the knowledge of God's glory. Really means you know, filling the earth with men and women who understand about God's character and purpose. رفتار و شخصیت خداوند جلال خداوند رو میدونن and filling the earth with men and women who behave in the same type of way as God behaves و همینطور رفتارهایی که میکنن اعمالی که دارن مشخصه رفتار اعمال خداونده که بهشون شبیه اون هستن and that doesn't happen now because we are all sinners متاسفانه الان اینطوری نیست چون که همه گناهکاریم uh, and it was the work of, of Jesus Christ to address the problem of sin. We can look at a verse in the letter to the Hebrews in chapter 2. 
Verse 10. Oh, yeah, death. به جا بود خدا که همه چیز برای او و به واسطه او وجود دارد برای اینکه پسران بسیار را به جلال برسانند قهرمان نجات ایشان را از راه تحمل و رنج کامل گردانند so it's talking about God as the creator در مورد این صحبت میکنه خدا خالق است the, the one who made everything and everything was made for him and then it talks about you know what his purpose in that creation was it was to bring many sons or we could say many children to glory so the, the, the children that he's talking about are the believers. So God's work with the believers is to bring them to glory. So that bringing them to glory is to bring them to the situation where they share God's character, where they behave like God. And when they are like that, they can take a place in his purpose of filling the earth with his glory. و این وقتی که این کار انجام میده میخواد هدفش رو با نسبت به شکوه خداوند جلال خداوند بر روی زمین هدف اصلیش منظور اون رو برسونه and the verse says in, in order to allow that to allow the, the believers to, to have or to share God's glory it was necessary for Jesus Christ to suffer که این وقتی که میخواد در همون در اونا رو به جلال برسونه یه چیز ضروریه برای ایسا مسیح که که از طریق راه ایسا مسیح بتونه راه این ایمان داره رو هموار کنه Because the suffering of Jesus Christ was concerned with dealing with the problem of sin the, the suffering of Jesus Christ was about dealing with the problem of sin. So sin has to be dealt with for believers to be able to share God's glory because sin has to be taken out of their life. Well, we're in the New Testament, we can also look at the second letter to the Corinthians in chapter 4. Second Corinthians chapter four and verse six. Do one Corinthians, Bob at Shahar. Oh, yes, she's. Zero. Zero. Hamun Kodavan Kiko. 
نور از میان تاریکی بتابد نور خود را در دلهای ما تابان تا شناخت جلال خدا در چهره مسیح ما را منور سازد Uh, we talked about God, or the prophets talked about God filling the earth with the knowledge of his glory. Uh, and Paul says that, that we receive light, that is, we receive understanding about that. Paul says that we receive Paul. Paul writing, yeah. Paul writes this letter to the Corinthian. I'll just find the name in Farsi. Paulos. Paulos. Paulos, I'm sorry. And Paulos, Yeah, that, that, that we receive that light, that understanding about this. And Paulos, ما نور را از میان تاریکی ها پیدا کردیم in the face of Jesus Christ در ظاهر ایسا مسیح این را دریافتیم that, that, that is God has revealed the knowledge of his glory through the work of Jesus Christ که در از این را میگه شناخت جلال خدا در چهره مسیح مشخص شده منور شده So with Jesus Christ, we have a, a man who did not sin. A man who always did the things that pleased God. So that in his own life, and the, the example that he gives by what he did, و این زندگی ایسا مسیح مثالیه برای اینکه نشون بده چی کار کرده He's giving us a picture of God's glory. Because Jesus Christ was acting like his father. He was copying his father in his life. So, so the best way that we have of, of understanding God and, and his ways is by understanding and reading about Jesus Christ. So, so that there we learn about God's glory. But God has also given us an example of how he wants us to behave. و همینطور خدا به ما یه مثالی داده برای اینکه بدونیم چه جوری چه رفتاری میخواد از ما what it means to share God's glory یعنی اینکه داره جلال خدا شگوه جلال خدا رو با ما شریک میشه if God's kingdom is about filling the earth with, with people who behave like God اگه زمین با پادشاهی خدا در زمین با جلال شکوه خدا از مردمانش با این فهم پر بشه then it means that there must be a big change to the government of the world و این یه تغییر بسیار بزرگی روی مردمانی که در روی زمین زده این کنن است now we live in a world in, in which you know, governments are involved in violence and war و ما تو یه زمین زندگی می‌کنیم، توی دنیای در زندگی می‌کنیم که پر از جنگ و درگیری بسیار و کارهای وحشیانه است. Where politicians are often not interested in everybody but just in what they can do for themselves. و سیاست‌هایی هستش که فقط به کسی اعتماد ندارن و تنها کارهایی می‌کنن که به نفع خودشون باشه. Yeah, the governments of the world in which we live do not encourage the people to live like the glory of God. So to get the world like he wants, God needs to change the government of the world. 
و به خاطر اینکه ما همچین جلال شکوهی رو روی زمین داشته باشیم خدا نیاز داره که یه سری از دولت مردان یا مر... کل مردمان رو روی زمین تغییر بده Let's, um, let's spend a few minutes on Daniel chapter 2 Daniel باب 2 So in the time of Daniel, the, the people of Israel had been taken into captivity for breaking God's commandments. در دانیال در مورد یه سری از مردمانی که قانون خدا رو شکوندن صحبت میشه and Daniel had become an officer in the palace of the king of Babylon و دانیال کسی که یه معمولی بود در قلعه بابل زندگی میکرده and the king was king Nebuchadnezzar famous king of Babylon. Ba uh, one night Nebuchadnezzar saw a dream. Uh, and he thought that the dream was important. So let me try my best with a little drawing. <coughs> It's going downhill in it. So he sees the image of a man. In tasbihi hastash ke namkad nasbid az ye shakhs. And the man is made of different metals. Va mard az chizay mukhtalif sakhte shode. Right. So the head was made of gold. Sarash az tala sakhte shode bud. The arms of the chest were made of silver. دست ها و قفص سینه از نقره ساخته شده بود the, um, the um, شکم و رونش از برانز ساخته شده بود yeah. و پاها از آهن ساخته شده بود and, and then the feet are made of two different things um, they still have iron, but it is mixed up with clay. 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 Like the. Okay. Um, and, and, and Nebuchadnezzar the king was was struck by his dream. Because the the man that that he saw had his face. Yeah, so it, it really grabbed his attention. Uh, and while he was watching, he saw a stone. Um, that the stone came out of the mountain side without any human action. It hit the figure of the man on its feet. So that the image fell over and broke. And then the stone continued to grow. And in growing, 
it ground all the pieces of the broken image into small powder. Uh, and the wind blew the dust away. So Nebuchadnezzar wanted somebody to explain to him what the dream meant. And God allowed Daniel to do that. And Daniel explained that the different parts of the image represented different kingdoms. دانیال بهش توضیح داد قسمت های مختلف که دیده از طلا و برنج و نقره و اینا قسمت های مختلف پادشاهی رو بهش نشون میده. So Daniel explained to Nebuchadnezzar that the head of gold with Nebuchadnezzar's face سرش که از طلا بود داشت چهره این نبوکرد نصر رو نشون میداد زمان نبوکرد نصر رو میگو represented Nebuchadnezzar and the kingdom of Babylon over which he ruled. Now at that time, Babylon was the most powerful kingdom in the world. So this image represented the kingdom of men. And the, the kingdom of men would go through a, a sequence of different powers being in control. So that Daniel said that the kingdom of Babylon would not last forever. But it would be replaced by another kingdom that was represented by the silver section. Now, when we look at history, we can see that the next powerful kingdom that became the most powerful kingdom in the earth after Babylon was Persia. 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 Uh, and the kingdom of Persia conquered the kingdom of Babylon. Uh, but again, Persia did not remain as the most powerful kingdom in the earth. Uh, would you repeat again? Yeah, that, that, that Persia did not remain as the most powerful kingdom in the earth. Yeah. And in the time of the, the famous king Alexander the Great, then the Greek Empire became the largest empire in the world. Which was represented by the brass section, the bronze section. Yeah. But in turn, yeah, the Greek Empire was also conquered. Uh, what does conquer mean? Uh, captured, 
overcome beaten yeah. and Rome became the largest and the most powerful empire in the earth و بعد از یونانیان پادشاهی رومان رومیان بود که بزرگترین و و مهمترین پادشاهان او دوران شد. So in the time of Babylon that Daniel explains there would be a sequence of four empires. و دانیال در اون زمان در زمان بابل پادشاهی بابل توضیح داد که این چهار تا پادشاهی قرار اتفاق می‌افتاد. Uh, and the history books tell us that that's exactly what happened. Now, the, the Bible, particularly the Old Testament, is focused on the people of Israel. God was working especially with the people of Israel in the time of the Old Testament. And it was these kingdoms that brought the kingdom of Israel to an end and ruled over the Jews. و اون در زمان بابل آخرین پادشاهی زمان اسرائیل بوده که بعد از اون پادشاهی ها به and Jesus Christ lived in the time of the Empire of Rome. But because of their bad behavior, the Romans completely scattered the Jewish people. به خاطر رفتارهای بدی که داشتن رومیان کاملا تمام مردم یهود رو از بین بردن. Uh, and they were removed from the land of Israel and lived in many different parts of the earth. Uh, and it's only in the last 100 years that the nation of Israel has reformed among the nations of the earth. و بعد از هزاران سال قوم اسرائیل دوباره برگشت مجدد به وجود اومد Now the last part of the image that the king saw was made of both iron and clay و آخرین تصویری که قسمت پاها هست در از آهن و خاک رست پادشاه دیدش and Daniel said that at that time there would be no one empire but many different countries. Some of those would be strong like iron and others would be weak like clay. بعضی از اون کشورها مثل آهن قوی و بعضی از اون کشورها مثل خاک رست ضعیف هستند. Uh, and that represents the time when Israel once again became a nation. Israel became a nation. Yeah. Uh, that was a nation. 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 Be a Yeah. Uh, a, a nation. So that when Israel became a nation again, then, yeah. It was a time of many countries, some strong, some weak. Now, at that time, this stone destroyed the whole of the image. And then the stone grew to fill the whole earth. And Daniel says, well, this stone represents God's kingdom. That a time would come when God would destroy 
all the nations of the earth. و این در اون زمان از اونجا که دانیال تعبیر کرده این وقتی که سنگ برخورد میکنه خدا کامل تمام ملیت ها و پادشاه ها رو از بین میبره کامل از تمام ملیت ها و دولت هایی که انسان ساخته رو خدا از بین میبره تو استابلش هیز اون کینگدم این دی ارث تو تأسیس کردن به وجود آوردن خود پادشاهی خدا so, Daniel chapter 2 دانیال باب دو verse 44 and 45 آیه 43 و 45 43 و 45 چنان که آنها را دیدی که با گل آمیخته بود همچنین آنان با یکدیگر از طریق اختلاط قومی در خواهند آمیخت اما همان گونه که آهن با گل در نمی آمیزد آنها نیز به یکدیگر نخواهند چسبید در روزهای آن پادشاهان خدای آسمان ها سلطنتی را برقرار خواهد کرد که هرگز از بین نخواهد رفت آن سلطنت به قومی دیگر واگذار نخواهد شد بلکه همه سلطنت ها را در هم خواهد کوبید و نابود خواهد کرد و خود تا به عبد سوال خواهد ماند درست همان گونه که دیدی سنگی از او برکنده شد اما نه به دست بشر و آهن و برند و گل و نوعه و تلا را خورد کرد خدای بزرگ آنچه را که باید در آینده رخ دهد به پادشاه نوعانده است این خواب درست است و تبیرش بکنیم So, yeah, God said through Daniel in, in this dream, you know, I'm going to destroy all human governments and replace it with my own kingdom that lasts forever. And there are many parts of the Bible that tell us that um, we would know to expect the establishment of God's kingdom when the Jews have once more become a nation. وقتی و بیشتر در قسمت های مختلف کتاب داره نشون میده که وقتی که ملیت اسرائیل دوباره کامل دوباره هم برگشتن و در کنار هم اومدن وقتی شکل گرفت اون موقع نزدیک به پادشاهی خدا this prophecy tells us well that time will be a time of a mixture of different types of nations و این پیشگویی داره به مالت اعلام میکنه که در اون زمان در این زمان که وقتی که اسرائیل هم and that's the circumstances of the world in which we live. And in the same way as this stone came out of the mountainside without any human action. یه نشونه از طرف خداست بدون اثری از کمک انسان یا هر انسان دیگه Then the kingdom of God starts with Jesus Christ who was provided by God's action and not the action of man که مثل ایسا مسیح که از طریق خداوند خداوند به ایسا مسیح دستور داد تا راه و برامون نشون بده because he is the son of God so you know, here's one place which is worth reading yourself 
این یه مکانیه در اصل یه دلیلیه که تو میتونی برای خودت بخونی where, where God says well the kingdom of God is about you know, removing human governments and replacing it with his own government in order to fill the earth with God's glory and that means that at that time yeah, the world will be very different to the way that it is today and the Bible gives us quite a bit of detail about how that will be but I've run out of time to tell you about it. <laughs> so I have to tell you more, God willing, next week. Is that, if that's okay? That's okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> تو خروج صفحه سر اجده بار سی و چهار خروج صفحه سر اجده بار سی و چهار خروج هفته ایتی 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 پایدار و محبت برای هزار پشت و آمور زنده تحصیل و نافر و گناه اما تحصیل خواه را حدیز بی صدا نمی گذارد بلکه جدای تحصیلات پدران را به فرزندان و فرزندان و فرزندان تا پشت ما شما می سنیم امالی که مثلا پدران انجام دادن که باید مثلا صدا شو بینن به فرچه هاشون می چیز می کنید درسته؟ این رو وقتی که تو این آیه داره میگه خدا دقیقا معنیش این نیستش که داره میگه شما تنبیه میشی به خاطر گناه پدرت God makes it clear in the Bible that he will hold each person responsible for their own behavior. که در کتاب داره مشخصا میگه که هر شخصی به خاطر کارهای خودش تنبیه میشه. But what God is saying in this verse is that um, yeah. So he says, but if you if you have a a father and he behaves badly and then he has a son God will wait to see how the son behaves and if the son behaves badly then God will wait again maybe one maybe two more generations to see if each of these still continue to behave badly like the father. And God will be patient to make sure that the bad behavior is continuing from generation to generation before he intervenes for judgment. Um, so, for example, when he had a relationship with Israel, he didn't destroy the nation when the first generation sinned. 
for he waited for many generations for them to show that they persistently wanted to sin. صبر کرد خدا تا نسل بعدی اسرائیل نگاه کرد که ببینه اونا ادامه میدن یا نمیدن. And it was only when they had continued to demonstrate that they were going to sin that God judged them. منتظر شد تا ببینه که اینا ادامه میدن به گناهشون رفتار بعدشون موقع اونا رو قضاوت کنه. So that's what God is talking about in verse 7. Waiting to see that the next generations behave in the same way. Another verse he wrote it. He wrote about the each person can be punishment in their cell, not because of their father. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, for example, Ezekiel chapter 18, say verse 20. Ezekiel. Is it a New Testament or Old Testament? Old Testament prophet. Uh, Ezekiel. Oh, that's real. Chapter 18? 18. Is that Hishda? Hishda, yes. Hishda. هر که گناه کند اوست که خواهد مرد پسر متحمل بار تقصیر پدر نخواهد شد و نه پدر متحمل بار تقصیر پسر پارسایی شخص پارسا به حساب خودش گذاشته خواهد شد و شرارت شخص شریر نیز به حساب خودش